Well, yeah, my first solo album was my first thing I recorded in Alien Beans, and like it was the reason I started the whole thing. And that was called Naomi Solo Pumpkin, which <laughs> was another one of those total jokes. My, my best friend, Jay Phoebus, uh, it was actually a title he came up with that just I died laughing over how stupid it sounded and I had to use it. That album was an experiment from beginning to end as far as I didn't even know what a solo album for me would be myself. I didn't know what I had to write. I didn't know what I really wanted to do. When I got to do my first real solo album, and what I mean by that is one that would be put in stores worldwide and on the shelves, because Naomi I did on my own and sold on my own, which uh, did so much better than I ever imagined. Naomi Seller Pumpkin started the studio in every way and started all the solo and side projects that I've done since. But I don't know, when I got to do the first real album that was going to be in stores, that's Moonflower Lane. I liked a lot of the songs on Naomi Seller Pumpkin and wanted to a chance to record them for real, you know, with real drums and, and do them right. And so I called up Alan Doss from Galactic Cowboys and came over and did drums and helped with sounds and stuff. He was a huge part of that record. So I did some of the stuff that was from that album. I re-recorded it for Moonflower Lane. So it was sort of that album again, but with a few songs that were new. At the time I did Safety, basically the material I had to write from came from being as miserable as a human being could be. <laughs> it was the worst time in my whole life I ever went through. Uh, just a horrible nightmare. And so the only thing I had to write was coming from a horrible nightmare. And this, so I wrote this nightmare album. For me, that one still wasn't really my first real album of what I really want to do as an album. It was something I did to get something out. But one thing cool about that record is all of a sudden I got more emails than at any time in my life or anything I've ever done with King's X or anything I've ever done. I got more support and emails from people saying thank you for putting that out there and helping me get through my same situation. So that changed my life. It made me go, what is it that I really love most, you know? And I'm thinking, well, most of the stuff I really love most is stuff like John Lennon in his worst pain ever, just being honest about it. And all of a sudden I realized I had permission to just be an artist and throw the stuff out there and let it go and let it be what it is. It doesn't define who I am, it's just a moment. And it's a real moment. With Rock Garden, I wanted to make my first real solo album in my mind. The one I wanted to make from the beginning that I didn't even realize at the time. Because it all of a sudden made sense to me who I am solo-wise, musically, what, what it is I love most and want to do. It's mostly 70s bass rock and roll stuff with a little bit of a twist. You know, kind of what I do as my part of uh, Flavor and King's X. Rock Garden, I felt, was the first real solo album I ever did. And of course, it was the most successful one. My favorite one, other than new stuff I'm working on, with that kind of goal in mind now. So long, my own superstition. Cause there ain't nobody looking You better free yourself Yeah, you might as well do your thing um, When I did my latest album that just came out called Something's Coming It's to me, it's like Rock Garden Part 2 It's another rock album of the kind of stuff that's really de most dear to me And what comes easiest, you know, what is just really in my core. And so I'm proud of that one too. I feel like it's a real album. And it's doing really well too. So I found myself with another period right after I made that record where I had a few months before King's X was going to do, be doing anything. I wasn't working on Jelly Jam yet or you know, any of the other side projects that were lined up coming up. 
So I thought, well, why don't I just keep recording since I love recording so much, just keep recording. Another passion I have is for kind of ethereal freakitude music. I like it when people find that element and make something melodic out of it, make songs out of it, something that moves you. And I've done some crazy stuff on the side before with, with Wally from Galactic Cowboys. We have a side project we call Xenophobe, which is just hardcore freakitude and ambient stuff. So me and Wally did that first and it turned out to, to do okay. And, and that people in the ambient community started reaching out to us, people who had you know, albums in that community that were respected great musicians were telling us that it was their favorite album and telling us how much they loved it. And we, had a, we started having uh, people in rock bands you know, uh, tell me it's the thing they listen to on an airplane because it soothes their soul and gets them through it. You know, things like that. It's like become this important work to a lot of people. And so I had this brief period after Something's Coming came out where I thought, I would love to do something that leans toward that kind of ambient stuff that is uh, also thought out like the songs on Something's Coming. I'd never put those two things together before. And so I decided to make an EP that's just something different that isn't what I would normally do solo-wise. It's not the ambient stuff wide open, it's not the rock stuff wide open, it's a perfect combination of the two. So I decided to call it Trip Magnet and call it sort of a side project thing so that as I do other Trip Magnet stuff, people know musically what the idea is behind it. It's a different musical idea. Things are going really well right now. I mean, King's X, we have a new DVD that's our first ever major release, worldwide release DVD, and it's from a sold out live show in London that we did last year on tour. The only thing we've ever done that, you know, actually has seven cameras on us showing what we do ever in the history of the band. We're real excited about that finally. After all these years, we're finally putting that out. So, uh, just so much going on right now. New Jelly Jam, it's hard to get to everything. And I love to be that way. That's my favorite way to be, where it's hard to get to everything. I love being busy. I love working. I am most definitely a workaholic and love it. It makes me happy. <laughs>